Go. Okay. This is Lab Blaze It 2.0. You may remember last year yes. when we lit coffee filters on fire. Well, we really what? like fire. Woo! <laughs> All right. So we didn't want to do anything as hard as we did last year because there were too many variables. It was too it was bad. Up. So we decided to do a more like complex system, but a simpler experiment. <coughs> so a Rubens tube for under a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Um, so for our hypothesis, we were just gonna test the speed of sound through natural gas, which I think is methane is what comes through the pipes. Mm -hmm. And we ballparked it to be around 400 meters per second, that's a value I got off of a website for methane, because it's probably like a combination of gases, so. Oh, we also briefly considered a pyro board, uh, but when we looked at them, the Rubens tube was much, much easier and much, much safer and cheaper, so it was just better all around. And much more boring, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well. Plus you could do the same thing as the pyro board, you just sing it. Okay. All right. Oh, you're right, yeah. <coughs> the whole point of the lab is to have fun. Okay. True. Uh, all right, so this is the stuff we used. Do we need to get me Oh, yeah, we do need to get those back. All well, right. We need to get them. <laughs> all right. So we used a 10 foot galvanized steel pipe. And galvanized steel is the safest. Schuster just used, like, was, I don't know. I don't know. Like, what metal like, it's not very like safe. aluminum or something yeah galvanized steel we went with the safest stuff so we use galvanized steel and well we did not use safe adhesive but we tried no we didn't we used hot glue we don't do that it melts what was it, it was hot glue duct tape yeah and like some oh, other yeah. stuff Maybe we like didn't get around to thing. using the caulk actually because we didn't have the caulk on yeah that might have been better i didn't know we needed one elizabeth all right we only ended up drilling about like 10? 17 holes. 17 holes because the drill bit breaks. Like, because galvanized steel is incredibly hard to drill through. Yeah. Do we have to do a prime number? That just happened. To be that just happened. We okay. ran out of time, my dude. Yeah. Do we not have any questions? I thought we did. I'm pretty sure there's pictures on our heads. So. Um, so, for the procedure, we just kind of. You had to. Since it's round, you can't just drill into it because it'll just go, boy. So you had to use the center punch, which is like a little thing, and you hammer it and make a little indent so that the drill bit stays. Mm -hmm. And then we would drill the holes. We tried to drill the holes. That was bad, because they just kept breaking. I broke two or three drill bits. Ooh. I kept Because the drill skids off, and because you're putting so much pressure on, it breaks against the tile. So you have to go extremely slow, extremely light with the pressure, and it takes you about five minutes. Per yeah, hole. upwards of five minutes to get one hole. Yeah, if and you don't break it while you're doing that. Also, the drill bits like to get stuck in the pipe. Um, that was fun. And then you, we put it together. So what it is, it's like the tube, and we have one end that's had like a kind of like a wood seal. I think we used to put the pipe, the yeah. tube into, hook up to the gas. Mm -hmm. And on the other end, there was a balloon and a sound system hooked up and then you just seal that all together with some duct tape and hot glue hope it doesn't melt and explode the room <coughs> and so yeah oh uh, yeah so we just play frequencies through that and measure the wavelength so here's some pictures of our setup um you can see our duct tape job in some of these our extremely sketchy duct tape job. Excuse you, I was trying to talk about your sketchy hot glue job. Okay, oh. well, <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> here's how we set up our speaker. Uh, the diaphragm's here, you can't see it, but that's the balloon that vibrates back and forth. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what we did here. So we hooked up the power the power source to the amplifier, to the frequency generator, to the amplifier. The speaker, yeah. Oh, and there are all the holes we have. Uh, yeah, that's all the so this is this is it when the frequency is on. Yeah. Um, you can see there. It's not Tiny exactly babies. a clear wave, but there's a wave. There's kind of one right here that's like half of a nice wave, and then one right here that's kind of a okay wave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You can see that some of the holes, like this one, cause just 
shrink the explain for some reason. Like they just weren't all the same. Yeah. Here's a magic we tried. Oh yeah. Great. Yeah. Or scientists. Good. These are data. We had two data points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Turns out you need more than seventeen holes. But we tried. You know, we we graphed them. Uh, we got some pretty nice correlation. <laughs> Get 1.0 correlation right here. <laughs> hey, I mean, we did learn in geometry just 62 points to make a line. So. Why is there even a linear fit on this? Lord, I don't know. I shouldn't be able to. I just stuck it on. Anyway, let's hurry down. All right. Um, our main source of error was that, yes, only 17 holes, and our pipe was really sketchy. Yeah, and like the holes weren't all the way drilled. Some like sometimes it'd be like half a hole yeah. if you only get through a little bit and get stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, surprisingly, we got under hundred percent error. Yes, our accepted our accepted value was actually pretty close to our hypothesis value, so that was cool. Our experimental value not close at all, <laughs> but somehow it worked out. <laughs> Yeah, we just wanted to see if we could build a Rubik's too. Yeah, this was less data heavy as opposed to like, let's see what we can build. Yeah. And let's see what we can't build. Other than some of these Yeah. And this is from Lab Blazing. It was lit. Alright, I think that's it. <gasps>